today we are going to implement a text based classification using python okay here we are using name based classifier approach okay which concept i have already explained it before please find the link of the video in the description if you haven't watched it so before starting let's understand what is text classification so text classification is you have some set of data some set of text which you are actually categorizing it whether it belongs to which category for example if i am telling that uh, that game was perfect so it belongs to sports category so like this i will classify it that is known as text classification so here what we are going to do is we have a, a document that document contains a lot of categories each category contains a set of documents okay now we are going to train our model based on those categories okay then we have separate folder that is test folder which also contains some documents and we will classify it we will categorize it based on the model okay then we will find the accuracy that how well we have actually trained our model how well it our model is okay so let's under, understand the complete overview that how we are going to implement it the very first step is import data so we are using uh, fetch 20 news group data set so we will first import it then after that we are using word count count vectorizer okay it's basically counts like how many words are there okay i'll explain you in brief when we will continue further then we have term frequency inverse document frequency it basically defines the weight of that particular word in the document and then we will use naive based classifier approach to actually categorize the data and then we will have the final result okay and at last i will have some magic for you okay so please stay tuned with us okay so first let's understand our structure of our data okay so see this is fetch 20 news group database okay in which we have two folders train and test as i have said you that we are going to train our model based on this train data and it has various categories you can see uh, athism graphics baseball guns politics and there are a lot of data so and each have some documents you can see there is a set of documents okay and see this is the document over here and this is the particular text and which is already been classified that this particular text belongs to athism category okay so on this we are going to train our model and then we will have uh, uh, our test data that is on which we, are, we will actually predict the categories and then we will define our accuracy okay so this was our data so now the very first step is importing data so let's see how we are going to import the data so there are two approaches first is you can directly import your data set from the internet so from for this we have we are importing this fetch 20 news group from using scikit learn okay yeah i am i'm using scikit learn over here and using jupyter to implement the entire thing as it is very easy to implement it okay so what i am doing is i am importing fest 20 news group data from scikit learn data set scikit learn already has a lot of data sets okay now you have seen there are so many categories in my data but i don't want all the categories i'm i just want this particular categories which, which are mentioned over here that is atheism christian graphics then med now i have i'm using here my new train variable okay which will actually classify which will actually take the data from the folder train okay and then i have new test variable which will actually take take the data from the test folder okay so this was one of the approach the another approach is you can download the data offline okay so i'll mention you the link of the data in the description please make sure that you download this data like 20 news by date dot tar dot gz okay this is a, it is already in zipped file format so just extract it keep it in one folder and after that you have to load the file so how we will load the file for this we have to import again scikit-learn dot data set as skd again mention the categories now take the variable new train and then load the files and here i'm mentioning my path where i have actually kept my uh, folders and then i'm mentioning the categories and most important thing is encoding here we have to mention the encoding so either you can use this iso 88591 or you can even use latin one it's your wish and then uh, as i have imported the train data similarly i will import the test data so now let's see it in jupyter okay so i have already written my entire thing in the jupyter so this is what like importing directly from the internet and this is directly importing offline okay i have created one one another uh, python file okay here we are actually finalizing it and here i will show the demo of some of the things which i have to show and this is some magic which i am going to show you later okay so <clears throat> now let's get back so when we are actually importing this data okay so in what format this data is actually importing so it will actually create a dictionary 
you can see the news data and news train is stored as a dictionary so if it's for the people who doesn't know the dictionary i will tell you how it is let's suppose i'm defining a dictionary sample dict is equals to it is a key value pair so i'm mentioning the key and its corresponding value see the key can actually store any value it can it's store string or it can store numbers or even it can store list see i have mentioned see i contain list and even it can contains dictionary nested dictionary also it can maintain so see i have mentioned the sample dict then after that if i'll write sample dict dot keys so it is telling me all the keys c key 1 key 2 key 3 and if i'll mention sample dict dot values then it will give the corresponding values for example key 1 value is value 1 then key 2 value is the key 3 value is the entire this thing the entire dictionary and key 2 is list so this is what we are going which we which we have this is how the dictionary is and if you want to access any variable then you can just simply write sample dict key 1 okay so now here see as we have loaded new strain so if i'm uh, typing new strain so see how it is coming it is coming a very long text you can see how long it is okay so <clears throat> so see i'm going to print the keys so print news dot keys so here here i have keys like dict keys file names target names tsr and so many keys like for example some five keys over there and now to access it as i have told just to write its name over here then you can access it so there are four target names what are the target names remember what we what categories which we have given it is the same target name okay and the another way which you can access is just write the name of your dictionary put a full stop and then write the key name that is target name so like this we can actually uh, access our target names okay so our next step is the word count that is count vectorizer okay so let's get back to our name based classifier what we basically do in that we will actually count the number of times a particular word is coming in that particular category okay and then after that okay we just count it then find the probability and then classify it but how you will make a machine to actually count the number of words so what it basically does is for example you have uh, such a big uh, text uh, such a big sentence what it will do it will give a particular unique number to each of unique words remember unique number to each of unique words okay then after that that it will count that how many times that particular number is coming it is not gonna actually check that text but instead it will give a number unique number to that particular text and then it will count how many times that number is repeating okay so that giving a unique value unique value to each and every word okay that is done by fit method this fit method is a uh, is is under count vectorizer class okay and then counting the number of times that particular number is coming is done by transform method okay so see here we have the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy deck this is my document okay so what we are doing is we are tokenizing it that is giving a unique number to each and every word see here the the is repeating two times but we are giving the as only one unique number that is seven lazy as four jumped as three and like that i have given a unique number so i got to know that there are total eight features this all will count is at eight that is brown dog fox zero brown has given the index zero dog is given the index one fox is giving the index two like this we have actually tokenized it so if you will actually uh, read it in ml terms then you will learn like learn a vocabulary dictionary of all tokens in the raw document basically this is the vocabulary which we are learning from our data set okay and it can be done by using count vectorizer dot fit as i have told you okay so now after fit what we have to do we have to transform it what is transform that is basically counting the occurrence of each word so you can see here how many times uh, my first feature was brown how many times the brown is coming in this sentence that is one dog how many time it is coming one like this all the sentence all the word are coming only one time now now see the last last word last word is the the is coming two times so that's why it has written over two over here okay now let's check how it is gonna implement in jupiter okay so see i have this is just a sample code okay i'm not actually gonna implement it over here it is just a sample code so i'm actually importing this feature text in import count vectorizer then i have taken only three samples over here the quick brown fox the dog the dog the fox then after that i'm creating an object for this count vectorizer okay this is the vector then after that i'm using this fit to fit to count to give the unique numbers to each and every word so see when i'm printing vocabulary so it is giving a unique word over here then after that i am actually finding all the features so these are the features which we have got then uh, i am printing count is equal to vector dot transform uh, as i have told you it will actually count the number of occurrence so it is actually doing the same and here it is returning an array okay so see the shape of the count the shape of the count is 3 comma 8 you know what is this 3 
3 is the number of samples it is uh, in the array it is the number of rows but what is this number of rows rows the number of rows are the number of samples so here we have three samples and this 8 this 8 are the number of feature that is number of columns so how many features are over there there, there are eight features so there, that's why there are eight columns okay and this is the actual array that is our our count how many times that particular thing is coming so here let's i will explain you how it is zero throw zero throw means zero that is the first text okay then first feature first feature is brown so that is how many times the brown is coming in the first text so it is coming how many times one time similarly how many times dog is coming in the first text that is one time Sim similarly how many times there is coming in the first sample so that is two times similarly when we will go to second text so how many times brown is coming obviously the dog there is no brown at all so it will be zero so like this it will keep on doing okay so in the near base classifier that is our final code i'm write, writing in this uh, in this uh, uh, what page okay so here what i have first uh, import the module that is from scikit-learn.feature extraction import count vectorizer again the same thing as i have created the object i'm creating the object for this count vector is equals to count vectorizer then uh, see what we were doing is we were doing fit this separately and transform separately but it also provides one more method that can actually does this does both the task in one shot so that's why count vect dot fit transform and i'm just trans giving the entire data from the training module and then if i'm printing the shape over there so see i have got 2257 samples and i got 3,5788 features uh, now the next step is term frequency and inverse document frequency i know so many frequencies right anyway so uh, what we have done in previous step is we have counted the words number of words but it has one issue what is that issue for example the word like the it will come up so many times but its large count doesn't make any sense in the classification of the documents okay so what this term frequency inverse document frequency does is term frequency is like number of times that particular word is coming inverse document frequency will actually give the weight that how much it is important for the classification okay so the words like the will get the minimum weight for the classification so let's see its definition that is this do this term frequency it summarizes how often a given word appears within a document and inverse document frequency this downscales words that appear a lot across the documents so let's take an example i have taken a three sample data set over here it is exactly the same which we have taken before and remember do you remember that we have eight features that is brown then dog then fox and at last we have the so here see after performing the fit transform method okay we got this this final inverse document frequency weight this is the weight so you can see the that the last uh, key that was the it got the least weight in the entire features okay so this can be done by using one of the uh, pack class of scikit-learn that is tf idf transform in that we will use the method fit transform to to do to perform the particular task now let's see it in jupiter how we are going to do it so see i'm in demo uh, class explanation mode so here i have first imported the data data set that is uh, sorry uh, uh, module that is from scikit-learn feature extraction dot text tfidf transform then now as usual i'm creating its object okay now see vectorizer dot fit counts now what is this counts imagine in the uh, in the previous count vectorizer we got the counts this count is basically this array okay so this count only we are using over here to fit it okay I am performing it separately like fit over here then transform over here but you can do it in just one shot by using fit transform method and passing counts over here okay so you can see here what I am getting this the is the last value okay and it is giving getting the least weight over here and then after that it is transforming the entire matrix this this whole entire matrix see its weight is reduced one has got the weight is like 0.36 or something like that the whole entire weight has been reduced uh, has been deduced okay so now in the final code that is name based classifier what we are going to do is see i have again same way i have imported the data uh, imported the module now i have created the object then after that i have used the fit transform method extend tf and then extend tf idf dot shape this what is this from where did i got, get this extend tf i got it from here that is the number of counts over here okay and now it has the same number of uh, samples and same number of features there is no data loss in between this now the next step is nav based classifier so here we are going to use multinomial nb it is one of the uh, part of the nav based classifier our scikit learn has already implemented this multi multinomial nav based classifier so all we need is we just have to import it 
okay this multinomial naive base classifier is used for multinomial models that have various distinct features okay so we can just directly just import this package okay and uh, the input is the and the output from tf idf transformer will be the input for this particular multinomial nv okay and we will have another another input we will have two inputs one input will be tf idf transformer output and the another will be our target names that is the categories that is ethism graphics and all those things so you can see one of the formula over here so this is what we have actually learned in our previous video that how it works in multinomial nb so now let's see its implementation over here so what we have to do is just import the particular class okay so from scikit-learn.native base we are importing it now what i'm doing i'm creating a variable and fitting the model into it remember we don't have to use fit transform over here we will use just fit fit is used to learn okay so that's why i'm making my native base classifier to learn from the inputs so I have given the input this is this is what I have got from here that is a particular array containing the inverse document frequency of each and every word so I have given that is as one of the input and another is this is my outputs that is it can either belongs to any of the category new strain dot tar target contains the categories that is ethism computer graphics and religion and many more okay so this contains the possible number of outputs and this contains the number of inputs so this is the actual line where we are actually training our model okay i'll give you one demo okay that how it is doing so see this is the line which we have which i have implemented now i have given one sentence in this the very first sentence is god is love and the second is open gl on the gpu is fast okay now as we know that whatever the, our model is whatever our data is we have to first transform it so here we are doing that count back dot transform i'm transforming it okay i'm not using fit transform why i'm not fit, using fit transform because i have because fit is used for learning and i have already used before to learn another module now what i have to do is whatever the sentence is coming i have to transform it based on my learning so learn is used so learn is done by fit which I have already done before. Now what I have to do, I have to just transform it. So I'm just transforming it. I'm not using fit over here. Then after that, whatever the output is there, I'm using as an input for TF IDF transformer. Okay, what I have to transform it to find the frequency, weight. Okay, and same, I will not use fit over here. I will just use transform. Okay, and after that, I will predict it. Okay, CLF. CLF was the object for multinomial. So this multinomial has a method predict and I'm passing the output of TF IDF transform as an input and now it will predict it okay so see first was God is love and it belongs to which category third now what was our third category in the target zero one two three so three belongs to sock dot religion dot Christian that means this word that is God is love belongs to religion category second is open GL on the GPU is fast so it belongs to first category so what is my first category that is uh, 0 then 1 that is computer dot graphics so it has correctly identified and categorized our values okay so this is how it works multinomial nb works okay so now it get back to our fourth step my, uh, my fourth step is finding the result our final result okay so what we are actually going to do over here first of all we will take over that news data test news test data and what we do and the very first step after that is vectorize it that is transform it count the number of words then after that find the weight and then we will predict it using the multinomial nb so let's uh, implement it in uh, jupyter okay so this is what i have done is x test tf is equals to count vec dot transform remember we will not use fit we will only use transform so i will transform my new test dot data i am transforming my test data now after that again i will transform it using the tf idf transformer to find the frequencies okay and then i will predict it so here i am predicting it now after that we have to show the result so see in the matrix dot classification report we get so many values precision recall f1 score micro average macro average and weighted average okay so here i'll just show you how it is from circuit line we will import uh, matrix then we will import uh, accuracy score and then after that i'll just uh, use the module ac method accuracy score to calculate the accuracy then i will use matrix dot classification root classification report is one of the method in the matrix module uh, okay and uh, by by providing all the values that is the target name predicted predicted is this predicted okay and then my all the target names okay so this entire classification report will give me this whole thing okay then after that i'll i'll pass another method that is matrix dot confusion matrix 
and this confusion matrix will give me this array okay but now understand what it is exactly so the very first thing was precision okay so i'll explain you by taking another example see i have first uh, uh, imported this classification report now these are my true values okay like the actual values and this i am predicting and these are the target names these target names are exactly the same as we have done in in our previous that is atheism computer graphics and all those things now i am passing all these values in the classification re report and i got this okay so let's understand what it is so see precision is number of correct result divided by total number of returned result okay so let's see here what is the total number of uh, and we have class labels as 0 1 2 okay so first first of all we will see for class 0 so in the class 0 the total number of return result is how much 2 right we are just focusing on 0 so total number of return result is how much 2 and the number of correct result correct how many times it has predicted only one time so it is what 1 by 2 is equals to 0.5 so this is what the precision is and precision for class 0 similarly for class 1 it will be different what will be the precision for class 1 how many times number of total return result so only one times it has returned and number of correct result so obviously this is not a correct result so it will be what 0 by 1 so hence the class 1 precision will be 0 similarly we have to do for class 2 ok next is next that comes is recall what is recall recall is number of correct result divided by number of correct result that should have been returned ok focus in the denominator we are asking number of correct result that should have been returned ok so here recall uh, for class 0 how many number of correct results should have written only one I should get only one right so I have written written one in the denominator and the number of correct result like whatever I have obtained how many result are correct only one so th that's why one by one is equals to 1.0 remember here we are asking that the number of correct result that should have been written so only one and then number of correct result that is obtained is one next that comes is f1 score so f1 score is just simply a formula that is 2 into precision into recall divided by precision plus recall so just substitute the values 2 into 0.5 into 0.1 divided by 0.5 plus 1 so it will be 0.67 this is what we are getting over there in the f1 score now what is support support is basically class 0 how many times it is coming only one time so support is one class one how many times it is coming one one time so one class two how many times it is coming three so support is 3 remember for support we are actually focusing on true values predict, not predicted values on true values now next that comes is micro average so previously in precision recall and f1 score we were calculating for each and every labels but for micro average what we will do total number of correct result divided by total number of return result so here how many results are written obviously 5 right so i have written 5 and out of the, those how many are correct so obviously this is correct 0 and 0 this is correct and this is correct so only 3 are correct from 5 values so that's why 3 by 5 and it is 0 0.6 so here the answer is 0.6 and this 0.6 will be obviously it will be same for all those 3 because we are counting with respect to everything predicted and true okay now next that comes is macro average what is macro average macro average is basically add all the precision like for all the labels like 0 0.5 plus 0 plus 1 and divide by total number of labels so we have three labels like right class 0 class 1 class 2 so add all the precision divide by 3 so it will be your mac macro average that is 0.5 similarly if you if you will do for this thing so add all the recall divide by total number of labels so if you will add then it will be 1.67 and then divide by 3 so it will be 0.56 similarly for f1 score and support support will always be 5 why it will be 5 because obviously you need all the 5 values to be correct five values we are needed so that's why support will be five next is weighted average weighted average is something different here what we are doing we are calculating the precision for each label and we are multiplying its support so for class 0 what is the precision 0 0.5 and its support is how much one so we are multiplying 0 0.5 into one plus for class one precision is zero multiply by one that is support and next class two and then multiply by three and divide by total number of support so the total number of support will be 5 or even you can calculate it 3 plus 1 plus uh, 3 plus 1 plus 1 that is 5 so add all this divide by 5 and it is 0.7 so we got the weighted average as 0.7 uh, 
okay similarly when we are going for recall so here it will be recall of each label multiply by support of each label divided by total number of support support similarly when we are calculating f1 score so similarly so here we will do this f1 score of each label multiply by support of each label divided by total number of support so now let's see confusion matrix so this is a matrix okay it is like the first row is altism second is computer graphics third is second media fourth is religion similarly here also the first column is altism second is graphics third is sky media and this is uh, this is question it is like 0 1 2 3 4 0 1 2 3 4 so it is like when um, how many times the predictive value was alt atheism and actual value was also alt atheism so it has occurred 192 times how many times the predicted value was alt atheism but the actual value was computer graphics how many times the actual value was alt atheism but the predicted value was 6 so this is how the confusion matrix is so we get to know here that when the predicted value was alt atheism but the actual value was christian it has occurred 119 times so there has been a lot of confusion between alt atheism and compute and christian Okay, so this is how the computer confusion matrix help us to understand that where we are facing problem in classifying our data. So guys, too much, right? Like, like exactly you see like how much I have to write for the code for this particular thing. But now I got an idea. I'll do in magic. Okay, I'll reduce the entire thing in very small thing. Well, let's see how it is going to do. Just see the magic right now. The very first step is what count vectorizer was doing. It was doing word count. What TFIDF transformer was doing? It was calculating the frequency. Now I got one more mod class that can actually do both the things at a time. Okay, it will do word count also and it will do frequencies also. So I don't have to write all these values, all these things. Okay, I'll just write TFIDF vectorizer and I can do it. But still I have to write multinomial and be right. But I don't want to write this also. So I'll do another magic. See, now what I will do is, I will make a pipeline over there, hashtag pipeline. Okay, what this pipeline is going to do is, it will create a linear pipe where it will define that first you have to do this and then you have to do this. Okay, and I will encapsulate it into a object A. Now I will perform all the operations with this object A. Let's see. Now here's the time for the magic naive base classifier. Okay, so as usual I have just imported the data set. Okay, now I'm not writing all those uh, TF, IDF, transformer, count, vectorizer. I'm just importing all the modules which were required like pipeline, TF, IDF, vectorizer and multinomial NB. And see, here I have defined a pipeline and I have created an object for it. Now, see here, vect I have written over there and here this is TF, IDF, vectorizer. This is basically how we were creating an object for here. Like, uh, like count vect is equal to count vectorizer. Same way, this is basically creating an object for this. Same way, we are creating CLF object for multinomial NB. Now, here, how we how we were training our module CLF is equals to multinomial dot fit. Same way, here also we will just write text CLF dot fit. So it will automatically first count it, then find the frequency, and then finally it will classify it. Okay, we don't have to write all those things. So just this one line and our work is done. Similarly for the prediction. For the prediction, see what we were doing. We were writing text, news test. We were transforming it, then again transforming it, then again finding, predicting it. Here in the one single line, we have done the entire thing. Full prediction we have done. Okay. Well, for the matrix, we cannot do anything. It is just exactly the same how you have written. So guys, I hope you have learned and enjoyed our video. Okay, stay tuned with us. Do like, subscribe and share. And don't forget to give your valuable feedback to us. Thank you.